in this session we'll deal with the ankle joint so these are the headings under which we are going to study the ankle joint the type bones forming the joint articular surfaces ligaments relations movements and muscles causing them and then the blood supply nerve supply and applied aspects you can see here type is uniaxial synovial joint it's also called as talocrural joint it's a modified hinge joint bones forming the joint are tibia fibula and body of talus you can see here the lower end of the tibia and this is the lateral malleolus of fibula and this is the medial malleolus of tibia and this is the body of the talus forming the ankle joint here the one particular point what you have to remember is the late the medial malleolus is in line with the joint whereas the epiphysis of the lower end of fibula is in line with the joint the tip of the lateral malleolus is approximately 2 cm below the tip of the medial malleolus articular surfaces inferior surface of the lower end of tibia medial malleolus of tibia lateral malleolus of fibula all of those surfaces form tibio fibular mortis trochlear upper surface of the body of the talus with comma shaped facet for tibia and triangular facet for fibula these surfaces form a continuous surface called trochlear talli so trochlear surface of talus is broad anteriorly and convex from before backwards and concave from side to side please observe this ligaments this, this is the interosseous tibio fibular ligament here you can see the calcaneo fibular ligament here you can see the deep part and superficial part of the deltoid ligament the ligaments of the ankle joint are capsular ligament with the synovial membrane so capsular ligament is attached to the articular margin except in the anterior aspect where it slightly extends on to the dorsum of the neck of the talus and the synovial membrane lines the entire interior of the capsule it seizes at the periphery of the articular cartilage and this is the deltoid ligament which is present on the medial side and this is the anterior tibial and anterior talofibular ligament posterior talofibular ligament and calcaneo fibular ligament these three ligaments are present on the lateral side you can see these are the deep and superficial parts of the deltoid ligament and this is the calcaneo fibular ligament you can see here anterior talofibular ligament extending from the anterior margin of the lateral malleolus to the Uh, uh, side of the neck of the talus, and here you can see the posterior talofibular ligament extends from the posterior margin of the lateral malleolus to the posterior tubercle of the talus, and here you can see the calcaneo fibular ligament, calcaneo fibular ligament. So now we'll discuss with the deltoid ligament. It has two parts: the superficial part and the deep part. The superficial part is having three parts: the anterior part, otherwise called as tibio navicular part. which is attached to the navicular tuberosity in the spring ligament intermediate part called tibio calcaneal part which is attached to the sustentacular pillar of calcaneus posterior part otherwise called as posterior tibio talar part which is attached to the medial tubercle of talus the deep part the uh, it's also called as anterior tibio talar so its attachment extends from a depression medial to the tip of tibial malleolus to the non articular part of the medial surface of the talus as i have shown in the earlier diagrams you can see here a depression medial to the tip of medial malleolus to the non articular part of the medial surface of the talus and this is the superficial part you can see the anterior tibio navicular part so tibio calcaneal part and posterior tibio talar part of the superficial part of the deltoid ligament the movements of the ankle joint are dorsiflexion which is approximately 10 to 20 degrees and in dorsiflexion the joint becomes closely packed plantar flexion 20 to 40 degrees and it becomes loosely plaited so plantar flexion is unstable as if you observe in the females wearing the high heels it is uh, having it is not stable actually and there are chances of ligament strain and that will be counteracted by the anti gravity muscles soleus and gastrocnemius which will become bulkier giving the feminine look in females who are used to wear the high heels then adduction and abduction are partial movements So you can see this is the dorsiflexion and this is the plantar flexion. So in dorsiflexion, you can observe the lower end of fibula is moving laterally and the upper end is actually sliding upwards. Muscles causing the movements: the dorsiflexion is caused by tibialis anterior, extensor distorsum longus, extensor malleolus longus, and peroneus tertius. Plantar flexion: the main movers are the gastrocnemius and soleus. Gastrocnemius initiates and the soleus maintains it. the tibial posterior flexor distorsum longus and flexor malleolus longus assist this movement peroneus longus and brevis comes into play in extreme plantar flexion relations in front 
you can observe here in trend from medial to lateral the tibialis anterior extensor knowledge is longest anterior tibial vessels the peroneal now extensor distorum longus and peroneostasius posteriorly in the center it is the tendocalcaneus on the lateral side peroneus brevis and peroneus longus on the medial side tibialis posterior flexor distorum longus posterior tibial vessels in the uh, tibial nerve and the flexor hallucis longus so arterial supply is mainly by the articular branches of anterior tibial artery peroneal artery and the posterior tibial artery now supply is by the articular branches of deep peroneal nerve and the tibial nerve. The dorsal flexion is controlled by L4 L5 sequence of the spinal cord and the plantar flexion is controlled by S1 S2 sequence of the spinal cord. Applied aspects, ligament sprain. The ankle sprain uh, due to over inversion of the foot is common and uh, it causes damage to the anterior talofibular and calcaneofibular ligaments. And uh, in forcefully averted foot, delta ligament is torn. What fracture? It is the horizontal fracture of medial malleolus and oblique fracture of the shaft of the fibula. So this is by malleolar fracture, which is called a spot fracture. You can see this is a ligament tear. And here you can see the pot fracture by malleolar fracture, medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus. And you can see here the fracture is uh, openly reduced and internally fixed with screws. Thank you.